your host, Simon Mayo. Thank you. Thank you. I'm too enthusiastic now. Strange indeed are the fears that haunt the human psyche. Some poor souls are seized with terror when they climb the shortest step ladder. Some are filled with panic at the sight of the smallest creepy crawly. And yet others feel the cold grip of mortal peril when they realise that they are sitting here in the confessions audience. The show has begun and I'm about to say their name. Your name, Ian Otley. <laughs> Hello, Ian. Ten years ago, you stood in a queue for a ride at Alton Towers. When at your feet you spotted temptation in the shape of a plastic sachet of mustard, you couldn't resist it. You stamped on the sachet, the sachet split, the mustard splurted, and the chap in front of you wandered off, not knowing that his clean white suit now had a dirty yellow streak down the seat of his pants. <laughs> and then there's you, Justin Hart. <laughs> Justin, when you were a little boy, your granddad gave you his war medals as a gift. <laughs> Look after them. He told you they're special. Then you and your family moved house, and afterwards, the medals couldn't be found. Your parents took the blame. Uh, we must have lost them in the move, they said. <laughs> and they never found out what you knew all along, that you'd swap the medals with your mate for some marbles. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's you, Paul Williams. Paul, when you were 13 and your mum was out, you found her car keys, borrowed her convertible, and drove it up and down the drive. It stalled and wouldn't restart. When you got out, the door slammed shut behind you, and the keys were locked in the car. You got a kitchen knife and cut open the convertible roof. <laughs> you reached in, unlocked the door, got back in, got the car started, and parked it where it should be. And how did you explain the cut in the convertible roof? You said the cat did it. <laughs> Your mum believed you. In fact, she still believes you. Until now. <laughs> now, somebody who comes to confessions, hugging their guilty secrets to themselves and desperately hoping that we won't pick on them. Uh, others come along and, and they just treat it as a big laugh, really. But tonight, uh, we've got something slightly different. We have uh, a group of lads here uh, who want to confess to something, to one of their mates. Uh, they don't know how to do it, so we're going to help. Who is the victim? I'm afraid it's you, Ed de Coverley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ed. Can I just squeeze in here, please? Oh, the reason I want to sit in here... Um... Hi, Ed. Hi. Hi. I, I want to sit in here, one, because I want to talk to you and all your mates here from uh, the <laughs> university. Um, but also I want to separate you a bit from some of them, in case you get <laughs> <laughs> a little bit cross. Right. Yeah. You're, yep. Ed, you're Ed de Coverley? Certainly am. Yep. And uh, you're a bit of a lad? Yep. Yeah. And you're here with your laddie mates? Yep. And uh, you like girls? Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and good, I'm glad I got that one right. And um, you go out with girls and you, they're on your course and you see them for a drink every now and again? Yeah. And uh, there are other ways, of course, of um, finding girls and um, you found a girl on the internet, I understand. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right in saying that? That's true, yeah. You were surfing the pages of the internet and <laughs> and this sort of relationship started. Is, is, is this right? That's true, yeah. And, uh, and who is it, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, uh, Ruth. Ruth, OK. And uh, you like her? Yeah, she's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what is it about her that...? Oh, she's pretty and she seems nice. Seems and nice. <laughs> she has similar things and stuff like that. Oh, OK. What sort of similar things? Um... Music, music, music yeah. yeah, that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a photograph of her actually, and we like everyone to see it because there she is, and she <laughs> is. <laughs> is that her? Yeah, that's her. Right. And uh, <laughs> um, and so you talk to her on the internet. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you realise that you like her, and does she like you? Um. Hopefully. So, and does she live a long way away or close? Uh, Sheffield. So from Loughborough, that's quite close. That's manageable. Yeah. So have you met her? No. No, not yet. Oh, no. Um, well, we arranged like a couple of times, but it sort of didn't work out. And, and why didn't it work out? Um, well, the first time we were going to meet in Loughborough because one of her friends um, is at Union Loughborough. We were going to meet up when she was coming down, but she couldn't make it because she was ill. 
then was there another time? And then there was another time she couldn't make it. Um, yeah. Was that the one? Was this the one where you're waiting outside McDonald's, this, or was that another? The one? That was the first one. I was waiting outside McDonald's. Yeah. That was that was the first one. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, which one are you? Mike. Mike. Yeah. Here's your mate Ed. Yeah. <laughs> he was. Do you want? Do you want to tell him or shall I? I Go on. Uh, Ruth doesn't exist. <laughs> Are you in on this? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't exist. No. Well, we got a photograph of her. Looks very nice. <laughs> got that off the internet. So all the time that Ed was talking to her on the internet, who was he talking to? Me. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Sorry, Ed. That's all right. If you're going to be told, you might as well be told on television. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you got to say to your um, good mates oh, from Loughborough? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I reckon, I mean, with a name like Ed de Coverley, I think you need noble mates. And they're sort of noble in as much as they got themselves into this, they didn't know how to get out of it, so they just thought, well, they'd do it on television to stop. And, but I think they, yeah, they owe you something. Do you, they, do you think they all owe him something? What's your favourite drink? Purple Nasty. Purple Nasty, OK. I don't even want to ask what's in that. <laughs> but I reckon uh, next term, every time you go in the bar, one of you lot buys him as much of this nasty stuff as you like. <laughs> Is that a fair deal? <laughs> Sounds good. So that appears to be the end of the story, doesn't it? I hope so. <laughs> because, as you said, you just picked a photograph at random on the internet yep. and invented this character. Yeah. Just through surfing the pages of the internet. Yeah. And you think the joke's on Ed, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, the internet is increasingly available to lots of people, and we've been surfing the pages of the internet, and by a remarkable coincidence, <laughs> we found this woman. <laughs> and, she, and she does exist. <laughs> and she's here. <laughs> and... <laughs> there she is. Her real name is Eve. Eve, say hello to Ed. Ed, say hello to Eve. Hi there. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, the start of a beautiful friendship, and it's here on Confessions. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Hi. What's your name? Dean Robinson. <laughs> Sorry, what's we say? Dean Robinson. Dean Robinson? Mm hmm 23 years old? Mm-hmm. Big fan of the Gladiators? I guess. You're the Dean Robinson that I'm after. This is a remarkable coincidence. I need you on my confessions couch now. Come on, Dean, quickly. Come on, chop, chop. <laughs> All right, Dean. Well, well. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> what should we talk about? Uh, I know, like, when you're at the hairdressers, they always say, Been anywhere nice on your holidays? <laughs> Do you been anywhere nice on your holidays? Not lately. No, you planning to go anywhere nice? Can't afford it. Can't afford it. It's a shame. Oh. Really. It's a shame. Because uh, I think a real top tip uh, would be to go to Ibiza, because I've heard that's very good. In fact, uh, you say you can't afford it. I heard of a guy uh, last year went to Ibiza, just last year, for 80 quid. <laughs> yeah. It was you, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's quite, quite incredible, because, I, cause the, you know, it was flights, hotels, the business. How did you manage that for 80 quid? Any time you like, you know. Well, my friends were going anyway, and, and they all had the money. So I suggested that, seeing as though they were going anywhere, I could just simply get a flight 
and stay in their rooms. Right, OK. So they'd booked, like, a year up front, hadn't they? Mm -hmm. And they'd paid £320. A lot. Yes. And you just booked a flight at the last minute. A couple of days to but go. Then, right, but then presumably, uh, when you arrived in Ibiza, uh, you didn't have any of the kind of paperwork and hotel passes and so on, so how did that work out? Well, <laughs> I, I didn't have anything, but when we got to the airport, there was the coach waiting to take them all to their particular hotels. Yeah. So I just jumped on with all the other people. And what, then, what, what did you say to the rep? Uh, well, when she got to me and she asked me for my name and which hotel I was going to, you must have my name on the list. I booked at the last minute. And you didn't say, I'm sure the papers will be coming through in the next couple of days? Well, that was when I was initially trying to bluff right. it all through. Yeah, <laughs> OK. So, uh, so there you are, so you get to the hotel. And uh, so did, did, did Thompson's ever find out? Which is the company, obviously, you booked through? Don't think so. No. <laughs> but they have now. Uh, come in from Thompson's, Mr Russell Amerisakera. <laughs> Did yeah. <laughs> I get your name right? That's right, actually. It's pretty, uh, pretty impressive of pronunciation, I think. Good. So now, do you get many freeloaders like this man here? Well, I have to say, it, it's extremely rare, and um, we're pretty cheesed off with him, to be, to be quite honest. Well, I can understand. <laughs> um, we have very tight procedures in place to stop sort of th this sort of thing happening, and at the end of the day, um, he's pulled the wool over the eyes of the, of the UK's largest tour operator, and uh, <laughs> we quite like to know what he's got to say for himself, actually. Yes, well, there's a good point. What have you got to say to Mr Thompson's here? I'm sorry. OK, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> that's very good. And so, uh, as well as Thompson's, uh, I would have thought your mates weren't exactly chuffed. I mean, first of all, you'd got the holiday for 80 quid and they'd paid 320, and then you're kipping on their floor, I mean, what, what would happen if, you know, they wanted to bring a local girl back or something? Well, a couple of them were very cheesed off and kept going on about how they were paying for it and I was a bit of a freeloader. Yeah. But I said that, well, I was the one sleeping on the lilo covered in ants and <laughs> I was the one who had to try and sneak past the, the porter each night. Oh, so well. it was the risk I was taking. Absolutely, so, so fair enough. Well, you can tell that to their faces, because they're here. All your mates, Simon Nicholson, John Cusworth, Paul Freeman and Pete Webster, they're all here. <laughs> all right. Take a seat. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's like welcoming Boyzone onto the stage, but there you go. <laughs> so, uh, lads, this is the bloke from Thompson's. This is your hey, mate. Hi, hi, mate. This used to be your mate. So was it a good holiday? Brilliant. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah? Yeah. yeah? We've got a photograph of you all on holiday. Actually, it's uh, on that screen over there. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, did you hire the mopeds, lads? Is that what the idea was? Yeah, yeah there was a place just round the corner from the hotel. You could hire them. And uh, so, 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 did. so then the great thing about having a moped on holiday, of course, is you can just you can jump on it, you can whiz all over the place, visit little villages and go all over the place, can't you? What did you use yours for, Dean? <laughs> <laughs> Just the same kind of things? Well, sort of the same kind of thing, but you didn't have the money needed for a deposit, which was £100, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the company... Because <laughs> the company was called... What was the Medped. company? It was Medped. Medped. And you say so you hired it, and you needed a £100 deposit. And you didn't have that, did you? And, but we saw you there, you were the guy uh, in the back on that photograph, and you're clearly on a moped. So where did you get yours from? <laughs> Dean? It can't get any worse, Dean, so... The, there was a, a, a bike left outside the hotel. There was a bike left outside the hotel. <laughs> and it was saying, I'm very lonely, I'm just a bike outside a hotel. The thing is, they all had these little um, lock which you put through the wheels, but this one didn't. No. <laughs> so, so you, you, you borrowed it, um, and where did you hide it? Round the back of a, another hotel. In a hedge. <laughs> <laughs> because what was your main fear? What, wh why did you think you were going to need this moped? Ah, um, after the, the hassle I had getting to the hotel, with the rep? Yeah, with the rep. I thought, well, there's no way she's going to let me go back on the bus 
and the airport was the other side of the island. I thought, well, if I keep the bike there and I don't get on the bus when they're all leaving, I can just ride to the airport on the moped. So, help yourself to the moped and hide it. So, what you're saying is that there was someone who was walking around a hundred quid worse off because they'd lost their moped and they weren't going to get their deposit back. They should have locked it. I know they should have locked it, of course. <laughs> uh, so it's their fault. It was their fault. So, so one year on, it's obviously virtually impossible to find that particular holiday maker. <laughs> um, but, but if we can find Eve, we can find anybody. He's from Birmingham. <laughs> He's a hundred quid light. He's very cross. And he's Clyde Foster, and he's here. <laughs> Dean Clive. Clive Dean. Uh -huh. It's payback time. Go on. You've got to think of business to sort out. <laughs> Dean Robinson, will we ever see him again? Civilians, it is a worldwide acknowledged truth that British policemen are wonderful, despite some <laughs> evidence to the contrary. Tonight's case concerns an American gentleman who, somewhat worse for wear after an evening's drinking in London, couldn't find a taxi. Instead, he tried to flag down a police car, <laughs> which he expected would take him home. Wrong. We took him straight to the cells. <laughs> <laughs> In the morning, he was cautioned and sent on his way. It was later discovered that the gentleman's release coincided with the disappearance of a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses belonging to a Superintendent Bland. <laughs> Mr. Dan Ozimina was picked up earlier this evening and will shortly be brought in for questioning. He has no idea why he is here, but we hope he will help us solve the case of the drunken American and the Super Shades. <laughs> WPC Bird, if, uh, if you're not doing anything, uh, bring the suspect in, would you? <laughs> <laughs> stay, oh, oh, stay there, stay there. Oh, oh, right. All right, all, all right. right. Just do it. Right. Thank you. Just take your time. Take right. your time. Oh, whoop. Well, there we go. Yeah. Big wobbly. <laughs> breath. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? His breath. Oh, dear. <laughs> Don't worry, you're, you're not seeing double. You're not yeah. seeing double. There are two of us. There you go. There you are. You're all right. right. Put some uh, strong coffee on, would you, Barbara? Thanks, Barbara. Right, can you touch your nose? Um, uh, that's very good, very good. Do you mind testing him, Bunsen? Yeah, could you just blow into this, please? That's a balloon, Bunsen. I know, I'm having a party later. I couldn't be bothered to do it myself. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks very much. Just ask him the questions, would you? Right-o. Sir, would you mind telling me? What the uh, customer is trying to say is that uh, you've been invited here to answer some questions regarding an incident in which we believe you played a major part. <laughs> What's the matter, Budson? This chair's a bit wobbly. Well, careful you don't hurt yourself. The last bloke you fell off that chair. Oh, the damage you did to his legs. Oh, my God, how did they end up? Plastered. Plastered? <laughs> oh, it could have been worse, though. He could have lost both of them. <gasps> then he'd have been... Legless. Yeah, legless he would have been. Oh, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's very serious, actually. What? Wipe that smile off your face. Off me face? Off your face. Completely off me face. Exactly. <laughs> now, as a uh, foreign gentleman, you are very welcome to this country, and uh, we feel it is for your own well-being that the constable and myself should show you the protocol regarding pedestrians and vehicles. So we'll do a couple of simulations, which will prove our point. So, simulation number one. <laughs> as a cat here, could you take me to the Hyde Park Hotel? Certainly, Governor. Why doesn't you just pop yourself on the back seat and we'll be there in two shakes of a kipper's nudger? <laughs> Plenty. It's a pea super outside and no mistaking, don't you know? Thank you very much. Now that's a taxi. All right, number two. <laughs> me, ma, me, ma. <laughs> There's the bloke. Get him in the back. You're nicked. Crockett's the old bill. Scarpa! <laughs> Offering legs. Put your foot down. 
That's the police car. Taxi, police car. Taxi, police car. You're screeching again. Was I? Yes, I yeah. am now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Blimey. Yeah, it's, it's very bright in here. Is there any way we can draw the blinds? No, no, no. Can't do that. Why not? Well, the uh, superintendent, Ray, uh, he won't allow it. In fact, uh, he says so in his memo. Read it out. Ray-Ban Shades. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> Ray-Ban Shades. Well, there well, you I go. To wear <laughs> right, Mr O. I think you understand the incident we're referring to. So, take us back to the moment you left the comfortable Soho eatery, somewhat worse for the wear, and decided to flag down a police car. What thoughts were going through your befuddled American head at the time? <laughs> Don't think I would know. Since I was pretty much already unconscious by then. Right. So you just fell in the road and the police car had to stop, or...? I think so. You flagged it down. We, we understood you flagged it down and... So uh... you, were, yeah, you were unconscious at the time, mm, but still yes. moving, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> like one of your <laughs> previous presidents, Mr <laughs> Reagan. <laughs> Well, so you managed to get to the police station, and uh, what happened? Don't really know either. I understand they didn't charge you. Thankfully. But, but they decided to put you up in one of the cells, isn't that right? Yes. Uh, that's very nice of them. Free B&B. &B. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very nice. And uh, in the morning, you uh, went home. Yeah. So in the morning, you got up, uh, you, you were feeling a bit better, obviously. Uh, did they give you your valuables back? Well, but my glasses. <gasps> oh, oh, no! Glasses. Oh, no, no. Uh, did you manage to get hold of them? Did you, did you quietly ask in an unassuming way? Could I don't think glasses? I asked. I think I was pretty much yelling by then. Yelling? <laughs> what, kind of American assertive? Hey, yeah. give me the goddamn glasses. I got friends in high places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. can buy this nickel and dime giant with the ring on my pinky. Yeah, I know people that can make things difficult for you. Yeah, see, see, see? <laughs> Would you like that? <laughs> A bit louder. Oh, <laughs> but uh, you, you were given a pair of, uh, of sunglasses and you were satisfied mm. and went home, I yeah. understand. Eventually they found these, I believe. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think these are the ones. <laughs> yeah. And what happened when you took your glasses home with you and you, you looked at your belongings in your flat? <laughs> my mate already had my glasses. <laughs> your mate already had your glasses. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, no, so, uh, so please. you just, oh, so you must have gone, oh, God, what a fool I've been. I've taken a pair of sunglasses from the station, which aren't mine. I must rush back and give them back and apologize. No way. Because <laughs> <No way. laughs> you... in America, once you take something, you never give it back. <laughs> like um, Cuba, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the thing is, Mr O, is that uh, we found out who those glasses belong to. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually a, a very senior police officer and he wants them back, so come in, please. <laughs> Superintendent Coleman Bland. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, uh, lovely to see you, Super. You're looking lovely. Um, <laughs> do you forgive him for his indiscretion? Under the circumstances, we do. Right, very well, generous of you, sir. if you'd like to give him his sunglasses back, <laughs> yeah. and you'd like to hand him his mayo halo, I think that'll be a fair exchange. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. O, for your full and fair confession. It's awards time on Confessions once again, the moment when we hail Britain's unsung heroes and acknowledge their achievements. And tonight, we pay tribute to those men and women who bravely resist temptation to spend money on things they need and instead grasp their cash firmly in their hand and never let go. Yes, these are the Confessions Awards for Extreme Tight-Fistedness. <laughs> and the Bronze Award for Extreme Tight-Fistedness goes to a man who, when going downhill in his car, always switches his engine off to save petrol. <laughs> he glides in neutral along flat roads and parks out of town for free and makes his family walk two miles into the shops. <laughs> and the winner of the Bronze Award is... Uh, Nick Clark of Doncaster. <laughs> Nick Clark, come down, please. Nick Clark, the Bronze Award. Well done. Back to your seat. Nick Clark, Doncaster. 
And now the silver award for extreme tight-fistedness. And this goes to a man who recycles his baby's disposable nappies. <laughs> Replaces the nappy tapes with electrical tape because it lasts longer. <laughs> and when the nappy is wet, he hangs it up to dry and then uses it again. <laughs> and the winner of the silver award is Nick Clark of Doncaster. <laughs> You really are something special, Nick Clark. Back to your seat, please. There's a silver award. Nick Clark. And finally, our gold award for extreme tight-fistedness <laughs> goes to a man who wears the same pair of trainers forever. When they come apart, he sticks them together with superglue. When they won't stick together anymore, he cuts off the toes and wears them as sandals. <laughs> Sometimes he looks so dreadful, his wife refuses to be seen with him in public. And the winner is... Well, we all know who the winner is, don't we? All together now, Nick Clark from Doncaster. <laughs> Nick, you're something special. You are very tight. Oh, Nick. Nick, just come back. Can you take these with you, please? Because they've been... <laughs> They've been ponging the place out all day, and it's not a very good item. <laughs> Nick Clark from Doncaster. <laughs> yes. Once again, it's time to say thanks for the memory. The moment when we pay tribute to someone in our audience who takes us back to one timeless moment before time itself moved on and we moved with it. On whom will our spotlight stop tonight? On you, Chris McClure. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chris. Chris, today you're a successful face on the Scottish cabaret circuit. <laughs> no one who ever saw it will ever forget your full body appearance in the Song for Europe competition at the Royal Abbot Hall in 1978. Chrissy, may the 70s come alive again and you look lovely in pink. Thanks for the memory, Chris McClure. <laughs> now, it's, um, it's my firm opinion that if I could do a little poll of everybody uh, who's in the audience tonight, if I could ask the blokes particularly, most of them would say, I would like to be a professional footballer. What a fantastic life if you're a pro footballer. I mean, you get uh, all that money, you have all those girls, and you only have to work half a day a week. Sounds <laughs> ideal. Uh, do you like football, sir? I do, yeah. You do? Do you play? Sometimes, yeah. It's not Paul, is it? It is, yeah. Paul Stolworthy <laughs> from Devon. Yeah. You do play, don't you? I do. Hang on a second, I've got something I want to show you. Do they ring a bell? <laughs> you want Seen those before? Um, yeah. When you were playing football last summer, what's your team? Um, I play for work. And what's work? Jersey European Airlines. Jersey European. And last summer, you were, uh, what were you doing? You were playing football against? Against another airline, yeah. Against another airline? Yeah. And the airline was? Bryman Airways. Bryman Airways. Okay, so, and you're wearing those boots, but they're not yours, are they? They're not, no, I borrowed them, yeah. They're a bit ropey as well. So. Yeah. And were they slightly <laughs> too small? A tad, yeah. So, so what happened, Paul? Um, well, after about half time, I've got a bit of a problem with blisters. So. Right. So you're playing on the pitch against Bryman Airways for with your blisters. team, and you've got blisters, and they're getting worse. They're getting very bad, yeah. Because these aren't really your shoes. So, mm. so what happens, Paul? Um, well, I sort of came off at half time because they were hurting quite badly. Right. Um, and I decided I'd sort of like give them a bit of a soak. Soak your blisters. In Fair the enough. in the medical bucket. Right, so you found the medical bucket, you took off your shoes and socks, Yeah. you put your feet in. Yeah. Do you feel better? Yeah, great. Yeah. So you, you were sort of healed a bit, so that was good, yeah, so you felt fine. an awful lot better. Then what happened, Paul? 
<laughs> um, sat there and watched the rest of the game. And, um, With your feet in the bucket? Yeah, yeah, yeah soaking okay. away nicely, no one noticed. <laughs> um, came to full time, hobbled back over, and then I realised it wasn't actually their um, medical bucket that I was soaking my feet in. What was the bucket, Paul? It was their drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> and they drank a lot. You didn't say, hey, didn't like I've to, just no. been soaking my burst <laughs> blisters in there. No, I didn't like to, no. <laughs> Did, so they never found out? No. <laughs> <laughs> Until tonight. <laughs> and if you want to know how they really feel about it, just listen very, very carefully. Brian and Airways, then, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your name is? My name's Jonathan. And you are the people who, at the end of this game, consumed vast quantities of water with a little bit of burst blister. Yeah, it was very chewy. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> and uh, what was the score in the game? Uh, I think we won 5-3. So you won 5-3, so maybe you discovered a new tonic. Maybe this is a marketable quantity. Nice fresh water with burst blister in. Uh, maybe, do, you yeah. do you fancy a drink tonight? No, uh, not if it's water. No, but how about a proper drink and Paul's buying? Great idea. OK, well, uh, the pub's that way, so I suggest you take him with him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as you may all know, football is my sport, and I've supported Spurs, the finest team in the UK, for... for... Thanks. The finest team in North London, uh, for as long as I can remember. So you can imagine how pleased I was when the actual manager of Tottenham Hotspur, Jerry Francis himself, got in touch and asked for our help. Hello, Simon. We need your help. Um, we've received a bill for £300 from a nightclub in Middlesbrough called The Tall Trees. Um, the nightclub manager told me that apparently six of my apprentices were up there one evening, had a terrific evening, plenty to drink, slap up meal, and told him that uh, Tottenham Hotspurs would pay for it. Um, I spoke to my apprentices, and they know nothing about it. Is that right, lads? No, no that's not us, boss. Well, Simon, <laughs> there it is. If you can help us solve this mystery, we'll have a ticket for you in our next home game. Cheers. <laughs> uh, makes me proud to be a Spurs fan. Thank you, Jerry. We'll do our best. Now, let's see. Can anyone here help us with this one? Uh, please stand up if you know absolutely anything about this. Could you stand up, please? <laughs> yes. You gentlemen, it's you lot again. Stand up, please. <laughs> Dean Robinson and his friends, and bring Andy with you this time. Down to the couch, please. You know the way. <laughs> The return of Boyzone. We're back. <laughs> it's Dean again. <laughs> Dean, do you pay for anything? <laughs> so, uh, take us back to this story then. Um, it was about <laughs> a year ago, and there's a very smart, exclusive nightclub in the North East where a lot of famous footballers go, etc. And all it was, I suggested to these that one night we should phone up pretend we're famous footballers and go for a bit of a free night out. Right, so <laughs> uh, uh, we've seen the repercussions of that from Jerry Francis. So uh, what happened on your free night out? What exactly did you get? Well, free drinks all night. It's been a night for all of you. OK. Free in. Yeah. You got in for nothing? Yeah. We got a meal as well. <laughs> you got a meal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exclusive yeah. restaurant. Right. And, in fact, the restaurant was closed, wasn't it? And they, had to, they opened it up just for you. The owner walked <laughs> us in and says, there you go. Right. And, and, and you said that you were uh, apprentices from, from Tottenham, so presumably you were London. You had to do <laughs> London. <laughs> no, so can we hear some Cockney accents then, lads? Stan. Well, you're the best, Stan. You're the best. Stan's the best. Stan. <laughs> All right, mate. And how's your Cockney accent? Then? All right, how's it going? Very good. <laughs> Very good. And, and, of course, they thought, oh, well, conclusive proof, 
you are from Tottenham, you are the apprentices. <laughs> but of course it was deception, wasn't it? Because you said to the boss of the club, you said, uh, we're Tottenham apprentices. And of course you weren't. Mm, no. So you got an awful lot of free stuff, didn't you? Mm. Do you think you owe him an apology? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. Well, fortunately, he's here, the manager of the club himself, Dr. Lau. In you come, sir. Sit down. <laughs> worried boys, worried boys. <laughs> Dr. Lau, you were taken in, taken for a ride by these guys, but I can see why. They look very respectable, don't they? I was indeed. Yeah. And their Cockney accents were completely believable, weren't they? Absolutely. And they took you in. And there's a lot of money went on the drinks and on the meal and getting in for absolutely nothing. Do you forgive them? I do, Simon. But there is a little matter of the bill, though. Ah, the bill, which Jerry Francis, Spurs manager, mentioned earlier, which was around £300, as I recall. Well, Spurs have got the bill. But fortunately, uh, they've sent a boy over with it. Well, well, when I say boy, I mean England international and Tottenham captain, Gary Mabbott. That's who I mean. Naughty lads. <laughs> yeah. Now they've been saying they're Tottenham princes and they're not. And there is that matter of the bill. Yes, I bought the bill, Simon. And it is. Actually, I think it, uh, it's got to be paid. Three hundred pounds. So, so uh, have you got the have you got the money, lads? Dean. Dean. Three hundred pounds. <laughs> oh, Dean. Yeah, you always some money. Yeah, yours. <laughs> <laughs> have so you got three hundred pounds here? Not actually, honestly. Not. What's the alternative, <laughs> Gary? Well, actually, Simon, I'm in a position to offer an alternative. Oh, good. If the bill is not paid the boys will come along to our training ground on a Tuesday morning to join in a training session, a very hard training session. A really difficult one, very lots of pain involved. We've nicknamed it Terror Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> After completing this session, yeah. the boys will be carried off the pitch, straight into the laundry room, to join the real apprentices in cleaning all our kit. What an excellent idea, what an excellent idea. I'm sorry, boys. That's the real price of soccer stardom. Absolutely, that's the way it has to be, and then they can have a little game, and if they're no good, we can flog them to Arsenal. Sounds good to me. Isn't that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Mabbitt, Dr Lau, and the Middlesbrough Freeloaders. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> okay, and uh, that's all from Confessions for tonight. We'll be back next week. Until then, remember, if you don't want to hear about it on Confessions, don't do it. See you soon. <laughs> good night. Thank you. An identity crisis for the bugs next on BBC One.